Thank you very much. And for the business on the speaker's desk, we have a special guest. And um, I'd like to introduce, if I could, the ambassador of Brazil, Nestor Forster, Jr. Um, Mr. Forster was born in Porto Alegre uh, in Brazil in 1963. He graduated from the Brazilian Diplomatic Academy, Instituto Rio Blanco, in 1986. And as a diplomat, he served in Canada, Costa Rica, and the United States, where he was posted three times in the embassy in Washington, D.C., and as well to the Brazilian consulates in Hartford and New York. Uh, after starting his career in consular affairs, Forster was posted twice to the office of the President of Brazil in uh, 1990 and in 2002, also serving as Chief of Staff at the Office of the Eternal Ge uh, Attorney General of that country. Most recently, he headed the Foreign Ministry's Information Technology Division. Ambassador Forster has had led numerous Brazilian delegations in multilateral uh, meetings and regional meetings, um, and we're grateful to have him here, as he was previously charge d'affaires of the Embassy of Brazil in Washington, and from June 1919, uh, 2019 to October 2020. He is the Ambassador of Brazil since 2020 to the United States of America, married to Maria Teresa Denise Forster. They have two children, two daughters, and two grandchildren. Uh, Ambassador, we'd like to have you take the stand and talk to us if you would, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Representative Russell Bowers, Arizona State House Speaker. Representative Reginald Boulding, House Democratic Leader. Chairman Kevin Payne and other members of the House Committee on Military Affairs and Public Safety. Members of the Arizona State Legislature. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to have the opportunity to visit the Arizona State Legislature as your beautiful state prepares to celebrate 110 years of statehood. I can appreciate the importance of this event as my country, Brazil, inspired by the institutions of the American Republic, adopted a federal system of its own back in 1891. I want to mention at the outset that I had the honor of being greeted uh, yesterday when I arrived uh, by Governor Ducey, with whom I discussed the main purpose of my visit here, which is to increase the trade and investment flows and the cooperation flows in education, agriculture, and other areas between the great state of Arizona uh, and Brazil. And we discussed concrete ideas about that, including the possibility of having some sort of trade mission to Brazil, opening a trade office in a, in a big Brazilian city, and uh, things of, of that order. My remarks today will touch on three main topics. The actions of the government of President Jair Bolsonaro to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic, Brazil's reform agenda and its prospects, and how the Brazil-US alliance benefits both our peoples and the cause of freedom. When we look at today's global health crisis, we should not lose sight of great national efforts undertaken to respond to it. And here, Brazil certainly stands out. From the outset, President Bolsonaro has stressed two main priorities, helping families, those suffering economic distress and unable to provide for themselves while in lockdown, and saving lives through a broad array of health measures, especially vaccination. The Brazilian government has put in place in record time the largest emer emergency relief program in the developing world, with over 8% of the national GDP allocated for cash transfers, direct cash transfers to families and other emergency policies. The World Bank recognized the magnitude of the Brazilian response, describing it as very generous. As the numbers show, Brazil also implemented a successful vaccination campaign. Up to now, more than 430 million doses of vaccine have been distributed, with 72% of Brazil's population of 212 million fully immunized. Our country now ranks fourth in the world for the number of people who have been vaccinated. This is no, no small feat for Brazil, larger than the contiguous United States, and from the Pampas in the south, where I come, to the Amazon rainforest in the north, a country of great geographical diversity. 
we are particularly proud of the effectiveness of measures designed to protect vulnerable groups in our country, such as indigenous peoples. Although very often inhabiting remote parts of the country where access is difficult, 85% of this target population are fully immunized. Progress in defeating the pandemic is driving a renewed push for economic reform in Brazil. Several key measures have been adopted since the Bolsonaro administration took office. These include pension system reform, which is so important for maintaining that cardinal principle for the Brazilian government, which is fiscal responsibility. Indeed, although emergency funds required in 2020 for combating the pandemic generated a budget deficit of 13.5% of the GDP, the deficit has already fallen back to 4.4% in 2021. Subsequent legislative reforms include the basic sanitation framework to attract investment to upgrade Brazil's basic sanitation system, the enactment, enactment of natural gas legislation, which led to a 20-fold increase in U.S. exports of natural gas to Brazil, and a law granting autonomy to the central bank to ensure a stable economic environment. With a view to modernize Brazil's infrastructure, the federal government has been implementing a large-scale privatization and concessions plan. Thanks to an environment marked by transparency and legal certainty, more than $150 billion in future private investments have been guaranteed since 2019 to develop projects such as seaports, airports, railways, 5G internet, oil and gas exploration. This year, has taken off with one more important accomplishment. The OECD has invited Brazil to begin the accession process towards membership, a step that will further our long-term commitment to the highest standards of a modern market economy. The Bolsonaro administration reform agenda was conceived to promote sustainable growth in a country that already possesses so many strengths. Brazil is one of the world's largest economies and Latin America's industrial leader. It has also developed a cutting-edge scientific infrastructure. Brazil contains most of the Amazon rainforest, which remains, in the case of Brazil, 80% untouched, as well as the world's largest biodiversity. Brazil's energy mix is the cleanest among the world's major economies. About 50% of our energy and 85% of our electricity comes from renewable sources. Our science-based agri-food sector, a pillar of global food security, is a model of efficiency and sustainability. Last, not least, Brazilian society enjoys a vibrant democracy, one fully committed to the principles of human rights and the rule of law. And it is this commitment that forms the foundation of our close partnership with the United States. Ties between our countries, almost 200 years of unbroken friendship, became closer during the World War II, when Brazilian and American troops fought side by side in Europe against Nazism and fascism. The common values that inspire our peoples and the convergence of interests between our nations make for a beneficial relationship as demonstrated by growing flows of trade and investment and cooperation in strategic areas such as environmental protection, space exploration and defense. Brazil and the United States help each other to prosper. Bilateral trade in goods broke an all-time record last year, 2021, reaching a total volume of $70 billion 9% higher than before the pandemic. A state-of-the-art Brazil-US trade protocol has just entered into force to spur opportunities. The US is the biggest foreign investor in Brazil, with a stock in 2020 totaling $123 billion. And according to estimates, Brazilian investment in the US totals some $45 billion, accounting for 100,000 American jobs. In my frequent interactions with Brazilian and American investors, I am always pleased to note the attention accorded to environmental protection, now more than ever a priority in Brazil, in Brazil-US agenda. At COP26 in Glasgow, Brazil worked together with the United States, joining the Global Methane Pledge and announcing new ambitious and verifiable commitments to end illegal deforestation by 2028 
and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Brazil further contributes to the climate effort through its pioneering role in the development of sustainable fuels, like eth ethanol, sorry, which can cut emissions by more than 60% compared to fossil fuels. Brazil, with 30% of its territory under legal protection through the establishment of national parks and other protected areas, stands at the forefront of environmental protection. The budget for enforcement agents that fight environmental crimes, such as deforestation, were more than doubled in 2021, reaching $90 million. President Bolsonaro has taken a strong stand in defending the principle that while protecting the Amazon rainforest, we must also create opportunities for its more than 20 million inhabitants, whose living standards are below the Brazilian average. Recent reports on Brazil-US environmental cooperation by think tanks give due weight to the social dimension of preservation efforts in the Amazon. A new frontier of cooperation has been opened between our nations, with Brazil joining the NASA Artemis program in 2021, making it the first Latin American country to participate in an initiative to land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon and then to send the first astronauts to Mars. This guiding principle that long-term goals must lie at the center of the Brazil-US partnership also inspires an ever stronger relationship in defense. Last year, our military conducted in both countries an exercise of unprecedented scale, which included a night jump in Fort Polk, Louisiana of Brazilian paratroops using a Brazilian-built C-390 airplane. I could go on for a long time about many other fronts in which Brazil-US cooperation has grown stronger, including in regional and multilateral areas, in democracy promotion, in renewable energy, in the integration of supply chains, as well as education and cultural exchanges. Better yet, I would rather leave you an invitation to visit Brazil, be it as an official or business delegation. You will then be able to see for yourself the reality of my country and the still untapped potential of a partnership that contributes to the well-being of our peoples and the cause of freedom around the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador.